So we're very thrilled that so many of the artists uh, have been able to join us here tonight, uh, as well as their sitters, and, and indeed a lot have travelled some distance to be here, so we, uh, we welcome and, and thank you. So I'd now like to introduce Angela Clark, who is uh, the CEO of Macquarie Radio Network, and she's kindly agreed to open the exhibition tonight. <coughs> Angela is one of Australia's leaders in the media and communication, and uh, she's a very keen supporter of the arts. She's Chief Executive of Macquarie Radio Network, and she's been so since May uh, 2004. Prior to that, she was Managing Director of JC Dakar Australia Proprietary Limited uh, for uh, six years. She's also a Director of Commercial Radio Australia Limited, Digital Radio Proprietary Limited, JC Decker, Australia Proprietary Limited, the Bangara Dance Theatre Australia, the Biennale of Sydney, and Performing Lines Limited. And uh, as well as her enormous support uh, for the arts, Angela is also a great friend of the SA Derby Gallery. So we, we thank her for that. So please join me in welcoming Angela, who is going to officially open the exhibition. Uh, I've been asked to speak in broad terms on why in 2006 an award for women artists remains relevant or perhaps more generally why awards for women are still important. It's a rather daunting topic but um, in any event and I've also been asked to speak about myself which perhaps is even more daunting in a room um, particularly dominated by women. But that said uh, I'm here and I've agreed to speak because the facts of the world show us that despite many countries legislating equal rights for women, we are underrepresented at the highest levels in almost every field of endeavour, except those where long hours for little pay are a dominant characteristic. Uh, I've studied politics in England under a fabulous feminist theorist called Elizabeth Fraser, and I remember a heated discussion in one of our tutorials about discrimination against women. One of the male students, my colleagues, was indignantly arguing that it was just as hard being a man in the modern world as it was being a woman. He argued about the pressure to be masculine, to be good at sports, etc. And after a while, um, Elizabeth Fraser's cut him off, saying, yes, that's all very well, Tom. On an individual level, both genders have their struggles. And yes, some women are very successful today. But we'll have what I call equality, when mediocre women get as far as mediocre men. <laughs> because positions of power are full of mediocre men, brilliant women, and very few brilliant, uh, are full of mediocre men, brilliant men, and very few brilliant women. But the average woman has Buckley's, or perhaps she didn't say Buckley's, but I can't remember what she said in her English accent. Um, but that's the general gist, and uh, so the debate ended. I perhaps go even further than my, my tutor because I look around at the very few brilliant women in the, their fields of expertise, including the, the visual arts, and I can't help but notice how sparse their number is at the top. Some argue it's because they don't want to be at the top. Others argue that they self-sabotage or that everything is done on merit these days, which seems to me to be an argument to say that men are just better at most things than women are, which I obviously can't agree with. Um, all of which I say is uh, baloney. I take a, a pragmatic view, uh, perhaps overly pragmatic one. I, I can't see any evidence that any group in, in history who's occupied positions of power has ever voluntarily given them up. Ruling classes, ruling races, dominant religions, whatever, it's not a male-female thing, but anything that's been gained by the so-called underclasses has been done in a fight, whether that's physical, legislative, philosophical, or individual. And as far as I'm concerned, the fight in which Portia participated and in her own personal terms succeeded continues today. Portia, it seems to me, although I never knew her, um, was blessed with a combination of incredible talent, courage and economic privilege. It is hard to imagine that she would have achieved her independence and career without the latter of these. Of myself, I was likewise blessed with a family who invested in my education and a mother who gave me stickers for my school bag in primary school which said, anything boys can do, girls can do better. 
<laughs> it was perhaps a little over the top, but if you knew my mother, she's a little over the top. Um, but I was given the courage to stand my ground and not be threatened in domains which are still to this day a boys' club. There are so, there are so many others possessed of incredible talent who've not got the thick skin or the brazen defiance or perhaps the economic advantage to break down and close doors, smash glass ceilings, nor the financial independence to survive a starve them into submission siege placed, put in place by vested interests. Hence, women of talent continue to support, need support and recognition. And I'll continue to argue for that until the day that talented women have taken the place of all the mediocre men in positions of power, in honour rolls and awards, and true meritocracy reigns. Thank you. Thank you, Angela, for the stirring words. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and now, uh, the much-anticipated moment is nearly at hand. I'd, uh, I'd like to welcome and introduce uh, Jonathan Sweeney. Uh, he is the Managing Director of Trust Company and he's going to announce the winner of the 2006 Portuguese Memorial Award. Uh, the, the National Trust is very indebted uh, to the Trust Company. It's the trustee of uh, the Portuguese Memorial Award and we, we thank them very much for uh, allowing us to have the finals here at um, the SA Turban Gallery, as I said, for been 18 years. So thank you, Jonathan, for your incredible support uh, to all areas of the arts. So please uh, join me in welcoming him to, uh, to make the announcement. Uh, thank you, Tina, for that introduction. Um, from one mediocre male to all of you. <laughs> Intimidating, actually, uh, hitting the podium after um, some, some well-chosen words. Um, look, on behalf of the Trust, uh, the Trustees of the Portuguese Award, it, it's just wonderful to see so many people here tonight. Um, it's so important the community gets involved and supports our, our arts. It, it, it is something I'm and Trust are very, very passionate about. It's just great to see um, access to, to wonderful art, but also the support here for all those people who really do give up so much um, for the sake of their talent. Uh, both obviously women, but also men as well. So. I would like to take, uh, take this opportunity to thank the judging panel for their fantastic contribution and, and effort. Um, thank you, Barry Pierce. Thank you, Adam Dimishu and Jane Waters. It's just, guys, fantastic. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Angela for her comments. Um, uh, I, think, uh, I think it's important uh, we have balance in society, and I agree with you a long way ago. Um, and I'd like to see some fantastic women on that as well. They've just got to break through it, and it's, it's not easy. Um, I'd like to thank Jane as well, the director of uh, the SH Irving Gallery and the staff of the Tria from the Cause Group for their roles played in, in the whole night tonight. It's been sensational. As I move towards announcing the winner, I'd also like to, um, the judges have asked me to make special mention to Joanna Braithwaite for her work, uh, Pleasant Point Revisited. Congratulations, Joanna. It's a wonderful. <laughs> this year's, uh, just for those of you who, who wish to look at it, this year's judges' report is contained within the awards catalogue, uh, available after the announcement uh, of this year's winner. Finally, uh, it is now my great honour and pleasure to present the 2006 Portuguese Memorial Award Prize of eighteen thousand dollars to Lucy Carlton. <laughs>
um, I had my camera, I was taking photos of people, and each night I'd go home after drinking and do little washes from my work. Um, when I got back to my studio in Hartley, um, I was very unhappy with my Archibald entry painting, but I made this painting over here, um, which is um, with two of my best friends, my dealer, Ray Hughes, and McLean Edwards, who's another painter. And um, so I made this painting, and it's been sitting in my studio, and every time, I spend a lot of time by myself, so when I'm on my own, and it's Friday night, beer o'clock, and I'm still painting, I think, oh, well, they're having fun in the city. And, um, yeah, so uh, I thank them very much, wherever they are, <laughs> probably having a drink somewhere. And um, uh, I, but thank you very much to the judges. Um, that was just beautiful that you picked this painting. If anything, it's the most personal painting that I've made so far, and it's totally from the heart and not a painting, prize painting, so that's really important to me. Um, and lovely to be next to Nancy Boulez, who's a beautiful woman and we'll miss her. And it's a shame Janelle's not here tonight. And to everybody else, it's a knockout show. <laughs> 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 I seen, you know, I spent, you know, I looked around, you know, this beautiful painting. So um, thank you very much, everyone, and cheers. <laughs> Uh, I'd uh, like you now to join with me in welcoming uh, the President of the National Trust, who's going to uh, say some final thank yous and wrap up the night. Uh, please welcome the Honourable Justice O'Keefe. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Tina Jackson, uh, my fellow directors, the talkers out the back. <laughs> Those who are polite and are not talking. In particular, Angela, Jonathan, ladies and gentlemen. First, can I welcome you all to this great exhibition. This is a wonderful space. It used to be the science laboratory of the, the Fort Street Girls High School. And we have pictures where you ladies are standing of the Bunsen burners, the benches, the girls with their pipettes and their sinks and the lot working away in this very space. As a result of the munificence of S.H. Urban, Harry Urban, we got this space and were able to do it up. We did it up with the help of Len Leeds, who opened up this space, putting that RSJ there and giving us this great uh, vista. And we've been able, over the years that the gallery has been in existence, that is since 1978, to make it a place in which there has been an emphasis on the work of the women painters of Australia. That has been our strength, that has been our emphasis from day one. So Angela, there is a recognition in many places that the work of women is important and should be pressed and should be pushed and that they should be given the opportunity to break the glass ceiling, to smash through the doors, whatever the metaphor that one uses may be. And the National Trust was at the forefront of that, as it is at the forefront of many innovative things in our society. Tonight there are many people to thank. First I would like to thank Angela for a very stimulating, interesting, provocative, talk in opening tonight's exhibition. It's not by chance, of course, that we have a leading female to open the exhibition of female painters. And she was a great choice. And thank you very much for the work that you put in to your presentation. I'd like to thank the Trust Company and Jonathan Sweeney for his words as well. The association between the National Trust and the Trust Company has extended over many years now. We have much in common. We believe that much that is good comes out of the past and can be projected into the future for the good of our society. And we work together well, and I hope we will continue to do so. Most of all, of course, I'd like to, uh, most of all, of course, I'd like to thank the artists who participated. You can only have one winner. 
one out of 309 is a pretty terrific sort of score. out of 309 that those that have been home is pretty good too and when you move around when you move around this exhibition you'll feel the vibrance the enthusiasm the energy that is part of the exhibition and that is part and parcel of Australian life and particularly here part and parcel of the feminine side of Australian life so to all those who participated, could I say thank you. To the winner, of course, Lucy, uh, many, many thanks. We have got many, many thanks in that envelope there as well. You <laughs> came back to complete, which I'm sure you will make many more thanks for you. We We shouldn't forget Portuguese and her family. She was a very talented woman. She was a pioneer, and the recognition by her family of her work in the award that we are celebrating for the 18th time in this gallery this evening is a very important recognition and we should not lose sight of the fact of Portuguese and her family. As we should not lose sight of Harry Irwin and his urban and his contribution to enable the National Trust to have this gallery which is one of the premier galleries in this state. Exhibitions like this don't just happen. They require an enormous amount of work, and Jane Waters and her staff do that work for all of our exhibitions. I think for this particular exhibition, they have surpassed themselves, and I'd like on your behalf, as well as on my own, on behalf of the board, to thank Jane and her staff for this exhibition. <laughs> The SH Urban Gallery has a very active committee that organises much of the activities in the gallery. I won't mention names because if you mention one or two, you leave out those who are just as hard working. But I would like to thank all of them for the work that they do, as I would like to thank the volunteers who serve you, bring you drinks, who do wonderful things in this gallery when you're not here but others are. So, ladies and gentlemen, on your behalf, may I thank our volunteers who work so hard to make sure of course, we have Dan Orr, who helped to keep the, the doors open, pay the bills, paint the walls, etc. To them also, may I say thank you. But above all, can I say thank you to you, the audience. You can have great paintings on the walls, you can have good drinks, but if you haven't got an audience, you haven't got a show. <laughs> and you are the ones that make the show. Year in and year out, and this year, we have uh, a super abundance of audience. We have you here, and thank you for coming. Finally, can I say one thing? Some of you may not be members of the National Trust. If you're not. <laughs> and I wouldn't do this promo unless I believe it. If you're not, please join us. You can assist the moving forward of our art. You can assist in the preservation and conservation of our heritage. You can become part of a movement that has endured for 60 years and will, please God, will endure uh, perpetually and will ensure that we remain an important, the important watchdog to protect our heritage and hand it on to future generations. You are here, take the chance to join you're not already a member. Finally, this will be my last Portuguese as President of the National Trust. I shall retire, retire as President on the 25th of November of this year, after 15 years. I've had a wonderful time. It's been a great thing to have been President of the National Trust. A great honour and great fun. And it's been wonderful to meet people like yourself at so many functions. I thank you for that. And I thank my fellow directors for electing me to that position.
we're in for a good spot. We're on the line. Oh, that was on the So lovely to share it with people who appreciate it. Thank you. So how did you paint yourself if you were asleep? <laughs> By blinking very quickly. <laughs> well I love it too. Thank you. Thank you, Suze. <laughs> <laughs> 